Thanks so much for sticking with us here. All right, well, I am Christine Nelson with Ingenuity Marketing, and with me is the technically capable Natalie Klein, who has solved our issue with uh, visual and audio, so thanks so much for that. We are communications consultants with Ingenuity Marketing, and uh, as we've been uh, working through the last few weeks, couple months ourselves on communication strategies with our professional services clients, we thought it might be a great time to talk through some of the lessons we've learned as well as how we can all look forward and consider new strategies and ways that we can manage our reputations as professionals and how all of you as marketers, business developers, subject matter experts can manage your message. And, uh, you know, really feel more confident that you have all of the pieces in place that you need going forward for either the next wave of change or a crisis internally or externally that you're dealing with. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, first though, I wanted to identify some of the trends that we're seeing so far um, in professional services marketing. In the last six to eight weeks, uh, we've heard some wonderful stories about marketers that have gone above and beyond with their communication strategies, with setting up resource centers, with being the catalysts for keeping remote employees engaged and connected. So I wanted to give major kudos to all of you marketers out there who are listening and have been burning a lot of hours to be very vital to your firms and um, communicating everything that's been changing and updating on almost a daily basis. In addition, uh, I believe that uh, we've had some additional stories about just outsourcing um, relationships and how they have really contributed to efficiency, to fast turnaround of content and messaging. And so keep those relationships strong because they can be very powerful going forward to be not only a resource for you to bounce ideas off of or to ask questions to, um, but also to add capacity to your firm. And you know, looking forward, how can you leverage those relationships strategically um, so that they can help you adapt and uh, you know, really plan ahead? Communication has really been everything. We, we know that the message um, that you're sending from your firms, um, that you're sending to your employees, um, they're gonna make a difference. Um, there are some firms that haven't adapted as well. Time will tell um, how that impacts client relationships, reputations, um, retention of teams. And so everything that you can do right now to be proactive in communicating with your clients, staying in touch with your referral sources, with your employees and your teams is, is going to be very important, not only this year, but probably well into the future. And uh, we've also seen that firms that were ready with integrated tactics, both traditional in-person, print, and digital and online presence, social media, uh, you just fared a lot more successfully when you had to shift your marketing strategy quickly. So just keeping those things in mind, um, we wanted to do a quick poll with all of you. And again, we'll get our fingers crossed with the technology here, but uh, you should see in front of you a poll where you can click on of any of these, what were your biggest challenges in March and April? to uh, manage the, the shifting sands of, of information and service that you've been uh, challenged to provide. It looks like majority of people are saying they were overwhelmed by the PPP government updates. A lot of you also saying communication or approval delays were a big challenge. So I'll go ahead and close okay. this. Okay. And we can Great. share this out there so everyone can see what's going on. All right. So for our um, account, accounting friends out there who've dealt with PPP and stimulus and relief, it sounds like that's been a, a big deal that you've been focusing on. And we've heard that a lot from our accounting clients. 
um, communication mm -hmm. or approval delays that could be in our a AEC area potentially where you're in the midst of a project and maybe um, things have been delayed. Maybe you're not hearing from project partners as quickly and so that's impacted you. So again, also on the legal side, I know we have some legal friends on with us or even association friends. So good to know that um, we're seeing the same things as you and then obviously marketing on the fly. We've all been doing that. So thanks for doing our little poll for us. I appreciate that. I'm gonna write that down. So in response to that idea of marketing on the fly and, and dealing with change, uh, we're going to walk you through a very brief crisis communications plan and the phases of, of that planning, how you can start to get ready for new business opportunities, how you can, while you're in the midst of serving clients and trying to develop new business, be ready for the next potential crisis that comes along, and really look at the environment for marketing and business development and communications in general as an adaptable framework. Things probably have changed in some ways that aren't going to go back to the way they were. And so if you're either an early adopter or you are a culture that says, you know what, we're gonna see how things go and then we might add things as we go. The adaptable framework can work in either of those circumstances. So uh, let's get started. And please keep in mind if you have questions as we're talking through this, we're happy to answer them in the chat box um, or you can hold your questions to the end and or you could follow up with us by email. But we're happy to be interrupted if you have something you wanted to ask about as you're thinking of it, so that we don't miss that thought process through our webinar. Sometimes we feel like we're just talking to ourselves. So feel free to jump in and ask a question. All right, so uh, when you're in the midst of a crisis or you are starting to come through it and feeling a little more normal, it's a perfect time to really start uh, looking back, considering lessons learned, really regroup and assess so that you can either strengthen the communications plan that you already have or create a framework for being very capable in the next crisis. So some of the questions you could ask yourself in this early kind of regrouping phase is, you know, what, what took us by surprise? What were some things that we really just were not prepared for? It's a great place to start to identify gaps in your communication strategy, gaps in your technology. Uh, look at, you know, authentically what could be improved going forward. And this is not a blame game where you're saying, well, if they'd only gotten their act together in this area, or if, if this person had just been more willing to try something new, let's just look at it from general facts. You know, were we ready? Were we not ready? Um, who was really essential to execute the plan? Um, we did hear stories of, you know, because of unfortunately furloughs or layoffs, um, suddenly someone who could have been very vital to providing a communication or a message to your audiences was not there. Or they were working remotely and they had a tough time really adapting to that situation. So think about your vital team when it comes to reassessing and, and regrouping on communication. Next stage would be to look at some planning. So I put together this template um, just considering some of the potential audiences that you would have as a professional services firm. And I filled in some of the blanks just to give you an idea of how you could go about this process. So you've got your various audiences, you've got different tactics that you've used in the past to reach out to them. And through a crisis, it can be pretty clear where you might have some gaps, things that are missing that could, if they were in place, optimize your communication strategy and make things much more efficient and seamless. And also looking at your ultimate goal. So if you consider your internal audience, which would be your employees, you might be currently reaching out to them from through an internal newsletter. You might be doing uh, 
quick videos from a managing partner or a shareholder just to say, hey, you know, how are things going? Or maybe you're doing personal phone calls. Um, you could maybe even carry that forward as, as part of culture building. Um, what were some gaps in that process? Was there an accountability issue where there was an objective to do this, but maybe somebody wasn't following through and why was that? Um, is there a timeline you need to build in um, where you know that every quarter you're doing something or every month you have a special something planned for communicating with your employees? And looking down, uh, you can see that I filled in some other areas for such as referrals. Maybe something that's missing right now is that you need to rewrite your client description. Going forward, there might be different kinds of clients that you're looking for, um, different sizes of clients, a new service area you found, or a new practice area, niche area. So when you're communicating with your referral sources, you might need to let them know, hey, previously I know we were looking for this type of client, but Here's a new area. If you come across anyone, you know, let us know. Um, same thing with media. You'd fill in the tactics that you typically use with media, maybe some things you've learned during the crisis that are gaps that you could fill in for the future. And then ultimate goal would be you want great PR, you want seamless PR, and you want some go-to spokespeople in your firm so that when the queries come along from the media and they see that you might be an expert to comment on current trends, future trends, you've already got those people trained, prepared, and in place to talk about your messaging that really differentiates you in the marketplace. So I thought that might be helpful as a template for you to go forward in you know, creating that new and revised and spectacular communications plan. So I thought I'd give you a couple of examples of how this is working in actual firms. Um, the item on the left is a state of the firm report. So this is an annual internal publication that this accounting firm uh, puts together each year that is a summary of sorts on not only how the firm has done financially, celebrating promotions, celebrating new employees, but also um, a lot of the community involvement and volunteering that the firm participates in throughout the year. It can be difficult to remember everything you've done in a year, and so by creating this state of the firm report, it's an internal document and an annual piece that the firm can refer to to see, wow, you know, we did a lot of things this year, here are the results. It's very transparent for the employees to feel good about working for this firm. And whether it's been one of those years where there's a huge crisis or it's a fairly normal year, it can be a piece of, you know, reporting history where it's easy for people who are new to the firm to learn about your culture. It also could be used in M&A opportunities where if you are a firm that is looking to acquire other firms in the future, you can give them this piece of information and say, you know, this is our culture. Does it match your, your firm and your goals and what you hope, you know, you want your firm to be going forward? Um, the other piece that I had Sorry there previously that. was, oh, that's okay. Sorry, I got um, a little, uh, <laughs> move forward. <laughs> Uh, so the second piece there is a video. So this client, um, again, an, an accounting firm, and I'll, I'll get to some other examples uh, later of AEC or associations, mm -hmm. but this accounting firm, um, they already had video set up. Their spokespeople were already used to being on video and sharing important information. So when the COVID-19 came along, they were able to ramp up pretty quickly to do some update videos for their audience on the PPP and on, on different aspects of service that they could provide to clients. So if you're not already doing videos, webinars, you may have started those now and they could become a part of your strategy going forward because people are getting trained on them and comfortable with them. If you haven't yet, then it's something to maybe put into your toolkit and consider as part of your planning. 
Absolutely. All right, now we'll go on to the next slide. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> jumped forward on me for some reason there. Um, one other area that we're seeing uh, a, ha, firms are having to quickly adjust is having to do with some of their infrastructure around SEO and social. And you may have already had some things planned out or scheduled, but you've had to turn and flip and readjust. Uh, maybe you, your firm has already optimized most of your site for SEO, but how do you know that it's, it's ready to go in a time of crisis? It's, it's something that when times are good, it's, it's easy to think, you know, we're, we're getting leads from other sources. We don't need to worry about our website. And many firms have told us that their website is a brochure or just a digital asset that they, they don't put too much time into. Um, it serves as an employee directory, a, a contact directory sort of, of resource. Maybe they're putting out occasional blogs, but in a time of crisis, you definitely don't want to have a non-SEO ready website. You want it to be optimized. You want it, you want it to be something where people can quickly find you online because that's what we're seeing is now we're suddenly in this digital world where everybody's remote, everybody's having to find their answers online. So how do you know that your website is, is optimized for SEO? Well, you, you know that because you've been A, putting in the effort, or B, you're tracking your analytics. You know that you're showing up in search results continually. You're tracking how well your, your keywords are doing. You're using those keywords within your, your website and your content, within your, your page titles and your headers. So you're already putting a lot of this into play. And, and even if you're not, it's not too late to get this rolling because it's something that is going to help you generate leads and do some business development because people are looking for answers online right now. We're, we're definitely seeing that. We're also seeing them moving to social to, to find their answers as well. We have a client who their employee shared something of the firm on social and it led to someone becoming a client of theirs. So social is contributing greatly because people are, are on their social media quite a bit. If you had social media already scheduled out, you definitely have to look at whether or not it's relevant for today. You, you want to make sure that you're taking a personalized approach in your social that you're being sensitive to the, the individuals that are affected by this, this crisis. Um, and then you also want to make sure you're aware of what's broken on your website. Are there any links that are not working correctly? Are there any pages that just aren't even relevant anymore? Um, that it's not technically broken if it's an irrelevant page. However, it's still something that's not contributing proactively to your site. Um, and today when you find yourself relying on your website so much, like we are through this crisis, you just, you need to make sure it's SEO optimized. Um, you need to make sure that you've, you've conducted keyword research that is leading to additional search results that you're tracking the, the efficiency of those keywords and it's being utilized on your website and your social in every bit of your content. We do see some common mistakes occurring and they're usually very easily remedied. They're often just stemming from just a little bit of misunderstanding or just not knowing the full story of how things work within SEO. One common one that seems to be seen a resurgence as of late is using PDFs. So the issue with PDFs is that they're not able to be indexed by search engines. And as a result, they just, they can't benefit your SEO. So oftentimes though, we, PDFs do have a, they do have a purpose and they often have some very powerful and rich content that's, that's contained within them. They can be white papers, they can be um, some very good infographics, things like that. And those are all relevant when they're used a certain way. Um, one of the ways that they can be used is as gated content, where they're providing highly valuable resource in exchange for contact information. And that provides a re reciprocating value between you and your audience. So we're not saying don't use PDFs, we're just saying don't let them be the way that you're disseminating information that your clients and prospects need to know about because it's not gonna help them find the answers through their searches online. Um, on social media, we're finding that firms are putting content out there through their own social uh, company pages. 
However, leadership and employees engaged in business development aren't sharing the content within their own networks. And so what we've been seeing through this crisis is that people are on social media more. With remote work, they're less worried about being seen on these sites when someone walks by their computer, but also it's becoming this sort of water cooler talk um, and simply just a way for people to connect with others in their lives throughout the day and throughout this, this isolating situation. So like I mentioned, we have a client whose employee shared something on her own Facebook page and the firm received a lead from that. Uh, now, use some caution around this. Asking your employees to share firm content on social media, it really can be a slippery slope because it, you can't require it because for some of these people, their, their social media is their very personal page. Um, but you certainly can encourage it, especially on LinkedIn since that's a professional networking site. And the best thing here is to encourage firm partners and business development professionals to lead by example and utilize their social profiles, especially on LinkedIn, um, to the level they're comfortable to engage with your firm's posts on social media and share them. Um, then conversion. There is some confusion around this term. All conversion is, is it's changing something from one form to the next. So this could be changing a prospect to a lead or a lead to a client. It could be changing your audience from passive to active engagement through website clicks or newsletter signups. So to measure conversion, you just simply need to determine what it is you're measuring. So don't let this SEO buzzword confuse you. Um, another common mistake we see quite often is lack of testing. So doing some A-B testing to see what messages resonate with your various audiences is an important part of your communications in SEO. Uh, this can be done through email testing as one example. Uh, you could write two different subject lines for emails using different tactics. Half your list could receive one email while the other half received a second email. Then you take a look at when the first email would insert their the recipient's name and perhaps in the subject line and perhaps the second one doesn't. Um, sometimes you'll find your audience, depending on who they are and, and what their interests are, they might respond very well to that, that call out to their, their name, to their, um, people like to see their name. So it's, it's kind of an ego thing sometimes. Um, but this can be useful to optimize your messaging during a time when business is normal, so to speak. Um, but then it's especially helpful when you're in the situation of urgent or crisis communications and you need to distribute information and make sure that the people that need to see it are actually engaging with your content and your emails and clicking onto the information on your website that they need as well. Um, and often on websites, we see a lack of categories, tags, and calls to action, which is the CTAs. These are important elements of your SEO. These, the categories and tags, they can help you create searchable content. You can also share specific blog, blog categories or tags on social by sorting or searching according to uh, what, you wanna, what you wanna share out, um, whatever that category is, such as maybe you have a COVID-19 or a pandemic or crisis communication uh, category on your blog and you can take that URL and share it uh, on social, in email, with whoever you want to. Um, and this actively engages your audience. It keeps them reading more um, about your content when you can send them a list of, of things that they might be interested in on your blog. In addition, adding CTAs to all of your content is also another way to engage them because you can direct them on a journey through your website, tell them what path you want them to take to reading more information, to uh, finally taking action and calling somebody it, and it does help your SEO. The more people are clicking through your website, the more that it will boost your rankings and keep that SEO moving forward. All of that is to say that um, when you've experienced a change in your marketing strategy, why not look at some of these opportunities to optimize and when you have new potential people coming and they're just really desperate for information because it's changing so quickly mm -hmm. and it's hard to sort through it all themselves, when you've got categories, when you've got you know things tagged nicely and organized, when you can send a list of resources versus just one blog post, it just makes things simpler for you down the road and you're easier to find. Um, yeah. Same thing with communications lessons. Um, this is more of the things we've noticed in talking to people. Um, 
some firms are saying, I wish that we had designated spokespeople just ready to go because we had media queries and it was hard to get, you know, our experts because they were so busy with other things to really take time and be committed to speaking to the media. So missed opportunity, but still it's an opportunity for the future. Crisis communications plans, um, to get those in place, crisis is going to happen. We, we now know that, that it's going to happen. You might as well have a plan in place with the right people who are handling it, the right processes. Contact boxes, um, we have seen more firms uh, pay attention to their contact boxes than they probably have in a few years. Because it used to be like, oh, well, people aren't gonna send us a, a question through the contact box because you know they'll, they'll pick up the phone and talk to us if they really wanna talk to us, but contact boxes are kind of out of date. Now people are wanting to get a quick question answered and they're willing to, you know, check more than one resource to get their question answered because they want the information now. So they'll fill out a quick contact box. And if you're ready with an answer, that just makes your firm look that much more reputable and responsive. And then it's seizing opportunities. We're starting to see now after six to eight weeks, um, Firms are saying, hey, there's an opportunity for the design we've been doing in K through 12 education. We can really highlight the fact that we already understand how to create larger gathering spaces that might be better for social distancing. Or maybe at higher education, you know, there's going to be a need for more single occupancy than double occupancy. So they're already starting to have webinars and putting the feelers out there to share their expertise on potential future trends in AEC, for example. With law firms, uh, there's a lot of opportunity there in many different ways from, you know, helping businesses with um, structuring, uh, how they're gonna do business going forward, to employee law, um, to unfortunately litigation, uh, business interruption, insurance issues. I mean, there's a lot out there. So I'm sure you're seeing a lot of opportunities to mm -hmm. move forward. And with associations, new ways of hosting events. So take a look at those for, for each of you. And Christine, we got a question about the previous slide. Um, are there free tools to audit our website or improve our SEO? There are definitely some free tools out there that you can use, um, you, some of them are limited because they are part of a paid version. So you can say get, you can get a list, but you can't export a list of the broken links um, that are on your website. Uh, perhaps you can view um, a few, few elements such as, well, we, we use some free things, um, which we can include in some resources that we send out after this webinar, because um, I, I can't recall the exact name of one of them. Um, but it's, it's one that you can see if you have page titles and meta descriptions um, behind the pages of your website. And it's completely free. It shows you how you're, you're, it's viewed, how people are seeing it, because um, that's all stuff on the back end that you don't see unless it shows up in search results. So we can certainly compile a list of a few of the free tools that we have available uh, or that we've used ourselves, um, and we'll send that along after this, this webinar. Yeah, just send us your email if you have questions like that, and we can certainly do a little research and follow up with you on that. So let's uh, spend yeah. the, the next half of our of our time today on um, getting ready for new business, because I don't know if uh, you're feeling a little fatigued like I am on the status quo of kind of being stuck and in, in crisis constantly. I like to start looking forward. I have more of a futuristic, optimistic view and so let's spend a little time talking about how we can look forward and get ready for a new business opportunity. The first thing you can do is, is work with what you have. Um, during this pandemic, we saw how busy clients were trying to manage necessary communications. And as a result of what was happening, their sort of business as usual content got put on hold for many, many reasons, um, including just not having enough time to produce it. Um, and in times of crisis, you still need to continue with content because of SEO, because people are still going to be looking for you online. And after this is, is all done, um, 
you know, as, as we look to the future, all of what you were doing before, it's still going to be relevant, maybe a little differently. Um, there, there might be some adjustments, however, they're still going to be relevant because you're, a lot of you are in our conversations are telling us that, that there are certain segments of your business that are still thriving. Um, well, maybe there are others that have seen a little bit of a, a setback. However, it is important to keep this content going because you need to have stuff to share out with your audiences in the future about kind of the normal stuff about business and, and what you're doing for your, your clients and prospects. Um, so, and it's, here's the other part of it is that it's also important for your SEO. If you're not continually updating your website, the search engines have no reason to index it. So you can, you can keep your content flowing by reusing old content. In fact, we do this at Ingenuity all the time where we will take an old blog post from, it could be three years ago, but it still has relevance to it. It still has a great message and it still applies to how, say, maybe social media works or um, how you should strategize for it. So, of course, there are some changes. There are some, some ways to update that in how technology has updated today or, or move forward. And so we'll take old content and we'll rewrite it and apply it to with today's concepts and, and technology changes and then publish it out. And it just takes a fresh approach and we didn't have to spend all that time writing original content. And there's nothing wrong with reusing that because it's, it's stuff you've already spent a lot of time researching and looking into. Um, we also maximize and update our, our existing resources. Uh, it, like Christine shared, there's, there's a lot of ways you can do this. She gave a couple examples, um, especially that, that firm, status of the firm or the state of the firm update. That's an internal resource that can just be updated every single year once it's created. Uh, we have other, other clients we work with that have annual reports um, on their industries or their firm or, or different niches they work in that get updated. We've done it um, even, even with uh, videos, for instance. We might have a video that has a former employee in it that, well, we wouldn't necessarily share that video out um, into our social. Maybe we'll, we'll take that video and turn it into a blog. So it's still, we keep the resource there as a video, but we create the opportunity for SEO through the blog as well. Um, one other area you, you might want to consider as you're looking at ways for businesses is how do you get people to sign up for your newsletter? How do you get them to contact you? Um, make sure that all of your forms, like your newsletter sign up, are, are working first off on your website, that anything that is being submitted to there is going to someone who is going to get it onto your email list because then you can get the information out to people in a crisis that they need to receive. And always just make sure you are putting these, these sorts of subscriptions in multiple places. It might be on your home page and on your contact us page and on your, your blog sidebar. So having it in multiple places just ensures that people have an opportunity to take action and get their name over to you and, and then see your, your information later. Um, ad campaigns, when you're in the middle of these scenarios, you need to review everything that you have scheduled out, including your ad campaigns. Um, make sure that they're relevant. Make sure that in a time of crisis, that it's not going to be an insensitive message that's going out there to prospects, but then maybe you have to pause it and rework your ad campaign a little bit. You might have to change the messaging. Um, in our case, we have a campaign on LinkedIn for AEC, um, Architecture, Engineering, and Construction, industry and it's a marketing, the state of marketing report for that industry. And we stopped our ads when everything began with this crisis. And then in this last week or so, we decided to revisit that piece and see how relevant it still was. Is it something where we should go ahead and get these things rolling again and get the message out there? And we decided that it was still a very relevant piece. A lot of the, the strategies we were laying out in this white paper were, were things that could still be employed even in the middle of a crisis. So what we did is we, we wrote a companion letter that will then go behind the, the cover page and it highlights now what they might specifically do during a crisis in certain areas that we also address further down in the report. So there are ways that you can continue to, to create business opportunities in the middle of a crisis and how you can then use that 
to propel you forward as you move out of a crisis as well. So I'll give you a couple of examples here. Um, on the left, this was a campaign that involved a white paper, a case study, several emails. Sorry, That's okay. Touchy button today. It is, it really is. Um, <laughs> and uh, so we took a look at, and it, it was a campaign that hadn't launched yet. So they were wondering, well, we put all this work into this, you know, what, can we still use it? Is it still relevant? And so by reviewing the content for them, um, we made some suggestions on the white paper, like for example, there was a photo that had um, it was like a close-up of hand shaking, like this, and I thought, you know, maybe a different image would be good, just because it's a little too soon to have those images, and it might distract people from the content. So maybe changing images, um, updating a little bit of the language in the e-blast and the intro um, within the white paper, and I think it's going to be a great piece for them to push out to their um, multi-unit, you know, franchisee type clients um, just when the time is right, when they need to have information to help them keep their business on track. Um, to the right is a market report. Um, so this had to do with a lot of market research within geographic regions. The research was done for an association uh, last fall going into you know the spring the idea was to release the report in the spring and it included um, a list of members of the association so it had a lot of really valuable content in it and so as you can see my little yellow post-its in the in the pdf there this is just a sample to show that you know we walked through the report we made sure that things still were relevant and then we as natalie mentioned we recommended a companion letter to say hey this research was done earlier now with COVID-19, you know, here's our take on it, but it's still a valuable piece for you. So again, different ways to adapt your, your content that's already in play. And there are other ways that you are probably, probably getting a lot of questions, for instance. Um, you can use those questions to, to get ready for new business and create an opportunity within your firm. Um, I'm guessing a lot of you are receiving some very similar questions from your clients and even prospects. And you can take those and create an FAQ post or page with, on your website with the answers. Uh, for SEO purposes, be sure to pose the question the way it's being asked. And this is important for voice search results because when people are using their voice search assistants, they speak in the way that they talk with questions and full statements. And an FAQ page can be a great resource as well that you can send to prospects and clients and can drive some traffic back to your, your website um, from not only who you're sending it out to, but from search results as well as soon as that page starts to get indexed. You can also look at some of the partnerships you can forge with associations and local organizations that you're a part of. This can be industry groups, um, maybe it's your local chamber of commerce or some community business groups. You could be a guest um, writing for their blog or their news page, creating an opportunity for you to share the information that you have. You're the expert at what you know. So get out there and, and be ready to share it because that's a way that then you're shown as the subject matter expert and it comes back to your firm. Um, you can also conduct a webinar or a virtual meeting to share your expertise in that area. And it can be in conjunction with these, these partners or maybe they will promote it for you through their organization to their members and, and their audience. So look for these, these partnership opportunities because they are out there. Um, a lot of these, these organizations don't have the resources to develop some of the information that their members are interested in. So when you come along, that's, that's just something that takes a load off of, of their, their um, plates there. Um, and also if you have, a tech savvy individual in your firm. Maybe they know LinkedIn really well. You can have that individual spearhead some training and video tutorials for those who are less familiar with the platform and are working within your business development area. Um, it just can be your leaders in your firm or um, just, just some of the, the people who are out there, they're talking to clients and trying to get the prospects in. So LinkedIn, it's, it's an incredibly powerful relationship and business development tool. I know that in our agency that our president, Don Wagonar, uses it all the time. And 
she's always talking about all of her conversations she's having with people there as well as her email. So it's, it's something that is a huge resource. It allows you to connect with prospects within your community as well as regionally and nationally. It's, it's incredible what you can do. So rely on those, those tech savvy individuals to help those who, who need a leg up because the reality is, is that it's, there's going to be a lot more digital um, lead development and business development um, going on in, in the months to come. And now is the time to, to learn this. Um, we're also seeing a trend in the area of virtual conferences and even virtual panels. It's really gaining traction with all of these social distancing requirements. But don't be fooled because the virtual conferences, they require a lot more strategy. You have to actually be providing information to your audience. You have to put some work into it on the, the front end with, with speaking videos or podcasts and, and relevant stuff, really useful information. Um, I know, Christine, you've been doing a lot of research around this. What have you been seeing in the area of virtual conferences? Well, frankly, virtual conferences have been around for a long time and the technology has been available. It may have been more for high-end users, but I have a feeling mm -hmm. since my futurist you know, self is buzzing about this, that uh, these solutions providers are probably going to be identifying opportunities for other types of users to take advantage of a virtual exhibit booth, um, virtual conferences that maybe last not just a week, but could be online for mm -hmm. several months, which means that your virtual booth then could include all kinds of content, um, recorded speaking, as Natalie mentioned, um, different strategies that you would use that, than an in-person event would require. You're not doing the traveling, you're not investing in the costs of all of that, so you might be able to transition mm -hmm. that budget to um, some key virtual opportunities down the road. So just keep that in mind um, going forward. I think on the next two slides, we're gonna just briefly touch on those just so that we stay on our timeline here. But we just provided you with uh, just some different tactics to consider within marketing and within business development. So, Natalie, if you wanted to just touch briefly on this slide and then we'll move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, as marketers, you really need to be managing the message. The best way to do this is you, you just you establish your priorities. Make sure that as you're getting bombarded on all sides, you know where your priorities are because that will help you stay on message. And you determine your priorities by looking at your short-term and long-term needs, whatever's out there that um, is coming at you, what, what's, what's needed today, and what can kind of be put off and, and uh, addressed later. Um, and then in addition, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's no longer available, uh, like these conferences or career fairs and uh, happy hours with employees. It's internal stuff too. It's, it's gone. The water cooler talks. It's, your employees are missing that. So look at some alternatives you can do with these virtual conferences or virtual panels, webinars, and speaking engagements um, on video. It's, it's all available and relevant. Have your team meetings on video if you can. Um, try to do, I know a lot of companies are doing virtual happy hours. Uh, so just try to engage with your clients and prospects and your employees in every possible way. There's a lot of opportunity that we're seeing come out of this that you can utilize. And so then you need to stay on top of those trends, not only there with what you can do currently digitally and video wise with your, these, these individuals you have to connect with, but also what's going on in your industry. There are some industries that are pivoting and their manufacturing in particular, they're creating opportunities to switch up their operations to create PPE products and, and other medical necessities. So how can you help support your industry clients? How can you help visualize ideas that can support them as they move forward? Um, strengthening those media relationships, like Christine said, it's it's really critical that you can present your firm as the experts. Build up your processes now because it's not a question of if this is something's gonna happen. It may not be this big of a crisis, but crisis does happen all the time in firms and it's, you have to have the process built up for how you manage this, how you manage all of your communications and move forward. 
um, and keep track of those early wins. There's going to be plenty of lessons to come out of this, ways we should have handled something differently, how we would have been more efficient, if only, or what we could have done instead. So don't let that shoulda, woulda, coulda mentality dominate you right now, but keep track of the wins you're getting. Pat yourself on the back and take a moment to be proud of what you have accomplished because you really do deserve it. Yeah, keeping track of those those great success stories with clients right now, with your employees, I mean, that can mm -hmm. all be used for future marketing. Um, just what I wanted to say Definitely. about business development, um, you're gonna continue to reach out, maybe just in different ways. Uh, start to think about some of those new sources of revenue uh, by looking at the industry trends that, uh, I mean, I'm seeing them through my trade show e-blasts or trade, trade association e-blasts that I'm getting. And some of the mm -hmm. other thought leaders that I follow on social media, they're starting to talk about, you know, what good things could be coming out of this in terms of business opportunities and industry trends. Send some handwritten notes. People are at home right now. They'd like to get more than just bills in the mail. So it's a great way to set yourself apart as a business developer to send a handwritten note to someone. Um, just, I just had an association uh, send me uh, an, e an email just saying, what's your address right now? It's perfectly fine to, you know, reach out to a prospect and say, hey, do you mind giving me your personal address? I just wanted to send you a little something. And mm -hmm. I think most people are okay with that. If they're not, you know, just be cordial about it. Um, social networking, again, as we mentioned before. So just take a look at some of those opportunities. All right, so next steps here. I think we're gonna do another quick poll. What will you prioritize now to plan for the rest of 2020? Looks like we're getting some answers here. All right. Primarily around networking, um, becoming a networking and lead machine, identifying new okay. sources of revenue. All right, we'll close that up. I love it. We've got a bunch of optimists out there. We, we, we wanna look ahead. We wanna see what top line opportunities we can develop 57 percent and 43 on the leads and networking that's awesome well and if, nice. if you can adapt if you can adapt your marketing in the digital realm to really push the content marketing and digital leads uh, going forward that is probably a great area to explore um, with the rest of your marketing strategy for 2020 and uh, we can certainly give you some ideas on that all right, so final thoughts here. Urgent communications this, readiness. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. And this, this really is, um, it's a situation like, nothing like most of us have ever faced in our lifetime and hopefully never will again. Um, but not every crisis you face will be this monumental. Uh, but your firm will face challenges and it will require urgent communication. So you need to be ready and get a plan in place. You can't anticipate every specific scenario your firm's going to face, but you can lay the groundwork for sudden change in how you operate or respond to these situations. And it's much easier to lay some groundwork now so you're not caught off guard later. Some of the common areas you can, pre you can prepare for include mergers and acquisitions. Perhaps uh, this is a part of the exit strategy of your firm leaders. Uh, you need to know how to communicate this to your employees. And this is, this is something that would be planned usually years in advance. Um, so planning that communications is vital. Maybe part of your firm growth is acquiring other companies. So creating a plan on how you communicate situations like this with your own employees and then also with the employees that are a part of the firm that you're acquiring and the clients you gain through that acquisition. Having those communication well, um, plans in place are critical. Yeah, and if I can add to on M&A, you know, sometimes M&A doesn't go as well as yeah. planned. And sometimes things get leaked out that should not get leaked out when they do. And so crisis communications planning definitely plays into this, this realm of thought. You know, nothing, nothing is ever definitely. perfect. So have that plan B in place if information is going out and, and it's like not exactly accurate or it's too soon. You want to be prepared yeah. for that. Definitely. Um, natural disasters are a reality, especially for some of you on the coast. It could be hurricanes, earthquakes. Here in the Midwest, we have tornadoes. It's, you know, this is all stuff you have to plan for. How do you address, act, um, or how do you tell 
your employees what the situation is with the firm and whether or not they should report to work. How do you communicate with your clients the status of your firm and how your, your work is, is flowing, whether or not you can function through this, this natural disaster or not. So you have to have a plan to communicate that. Um, accidents are a reality for some industries, especially AEC firms. Um, how do you address accidents on the job site and who needs to be communicated with and how does the information get disseminated? Uh, it's, it's really critical that you're able to respond to accidents very quickly. Um, some industries are even more urgent than others, but have a plan in place. Um, clients and leaders may not always act as good as we would like. And while we'd like to believe we hire the most ethical people and only have only well-intentioned clients, it's just not always reality. Um, as Christine said, not everything goes perfectly according to plan. So you do need to plan for communication around this and just hope that you never need it. That's your best course of action on this. Um, in pandemic, we're in the middle of this. And what this has taught us um, is what works and what we need to do differently in case of a future pandemic. And we're still in the middle of it, really. It's, it's not over. We're, we're still trying to make sense of it and put some plans in place. And it's not too late to lay out your processes and follow it during this time. So in the messaging, um, it's never good to just forge ahead and you know immediately answer some issue that's out there. We've had this happen with clients in a few different ways. Um, we've had issues of you know so bad stuff is being said on social media or review sites. And you know you want to respond right away and say you know that's not true, but it's important to really step step back, stick to the facts, try to be unemotional, you know, as much mm -hmm. as possible with your messaging, so that it's a really strategic approach going forward. Um, we've had situations with banks where there have been customer issues, and they've wondered, you know, well, how do we respond to this? The customer is bad mouthing us, and you don't want to necessarily um, get into a situation where you're dealing with their law firm, even though law firms can also be good advisory people on situations like this in terms of how to respond, but you don't want to deal with the customer's lawyer. You want to be able to handle this early so it doesn't get to that point. So just some things in terms of messaging. Um, next slide. We'll talk about uh, just planning. So who are your spokespeople? How are you going to respond? Press release statement, you're gonna do a personal video. Which channels should you use? And do you have trusted consultants out there, whether PR consultants, your attorney, um, anyone that you know who can provide that third person objectivity to move you forward and respond quickly? Yes. So those are just my thoughts on that. We're moving into an adaptable framework. The whole idea behind um, our talk today is to really give you some tips and tools. Um, definitely keep us in mind if you have questions uh, moving forward with your plan, whether it's a crisis communications plan or just getting your marketing and your business development rolling again. So here are a few tips here. Um, I know we're coming up on two o'clock, so I wanted to leave room for questions, but I think the next few slides, you know, we're just giving you some some kudos, you know, to keep rolling and keep being human because um, that's honestly at the end of the day with communications, that's what it's all about is uh, providing value, okay. helping people, and they're going to remember when you helped them. And definitely pat yourselves on the back. You guys have been doing a monumental task and it's, it's a lot for any person to do. And some of you only have one person in your marketing department. Some of you have a few, but you're still strapped. You, you have too much going on. So collect the stories that are happening, save those up for later because they make some great success stories later within your firm and with prospects. Um, and just take care of yourself. Focus on why you're doing this and you really are helping people and just be ready to support each other any way you can and congratulate each other for a job well done. For sure. We've, we've got plenty of resources available. Uh, if you want more content like this, you can go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter. That's a great way to keep getting information from Ingenuity. 
and we are very informational and focused. We, as you can tell, we're not really that self-promotional. We actually want to help too and consult with you on different strategies. So take a look at those resources on our website. We're available, Natalie and I, to answer questions, to help bounce ideas um, between your, your firm and, and our team. And we're, we're definitely open for questions either right now or you know, after the webinar. So just let us know your thoughts. Uh, we did get one more question. If you're reusing content, is it best to republish to the blog or add a new blog post? Um, we generally add a new blog post when we're republishing content. We leave the original because it is still SEO. Um, if it's something we still have within our archive, um, we do tend to take really old stuff off just to speed up the website and help it function. Um, however, we will um, definitely make it a new blog post because it creates an opportunity for indexing within the search engines. So, and I think that is the only question we have right now. So. Yeah, any other questions right. before we sign off here? I know we started a couple minutes late with our technical issue. Apologies again. We're writers. We're not, I mean, Natalie's more technical than me, but most of the time we're spending like writing and researching. So we're, we're, we're lucky learning, we, you know, <laughs> I know I'm just learning new tricks all the time, like everybody. So thanks so much for spending the hour with us. And we hope, uh, hope all of you are well and that you're excited about trying some new things and, and getting your firms visible and having great reputations. Um, hopefully you can join us as well on our webinar next week. We are gonna be talking about talent reputation, managing your talent brand. So if you're interested in that, take a look and join us on that next Wednesday. And thank you. All right. Thank you.